Amen. So I'm going to take this moment to get a little serious now. So you might know my story. And um, at 15 years old, oh, this seat is dangerous. Is this good? Okay, it's good. Okay, I was like, whoa. Yeah, it can be. Woo, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I will not fall down. Hallelujah. said in my bedroom, Lord, you know, whoever you are, I want to die. And he told me he had a plan for my life, remember? Yeah. Well, I want to talk to you about poverty. Because when I first got married, I had received Jesus when I was 15. I was told that Yeshua was the Messiah on Miami Beach. My Jewish cousin told me that Yeshua the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, came for the Jewish people to heal the sick, to make the blind to see. And he claimed to be the Messiah. And he did great things. And if he wasn't the Messiah, then you have to believe that maybe he was lying. And how could he be lying if everything he did was wonderful and fabulous and amazing? And raising the dead and healing the sick, how could that doesn't match? And I believed with the faith of a child. When I got married to Joe years later, we went through some really tough times, and the Lord put it on my heart to share this with you tonight, even though I'm kind of coming off my timeline. We, I was kind of a dumb bride. I thought, because I grew up in a family that was middle class, that I could just take a credit card and kind of just use it, and that the money would come out of the sky. And I'm so sorry, honey, I didn't know. Plus, I had my college debt, and I wish I could tell you that I bought a mink or that I bought expensive perfume, but I really bought silly things. Like I went to Telco, which is this horrible store in Brooklyn that makes like $5 clothing, and I would just spend like $100 there on $5 clothing, and I was just such a dumb bride. <laughs> Joe loved me, and he took me out to nice restaurants, and you know, we used our money as wisely as we could, but we really didn't know, and um, we tried to be smart. We worked our butts off, and at the end of the day, we finally moved to Nashville and lost our jobs. And so at that point, we had to go into full-time ministry fast. And um, I remember getting calls from the credit card companies and crying. Because I was home as a newlywed, and he was at work. And I remember the guilt, and I remember the shame. And then I remember the IRS calling because there was a mistake from years prior when Joe's first wife passed away and there were some taxes from her and they were put on us and it was just, oh my God. And we were praying and every day I would pray and I would try not to let it get to me and I would call his office crying and he was trying to work and just the feeling of poverty. Now, later that year we went to El Salvador on a missions trip and we had zero dollars in our pocket. And I remember we raised money so that we can get shots, so that I could go and hug and kiss these people and tell them about Jesus. And we had no money for, like, food, but we were raising money for, like, the shots. That was so strange. And when we went over there, we were greatly humbled, of course. But that feeling of poverty was just, I mean, it's not poverty like the experience in third world nations, but the feeling of poverty on America today, on middle class, lower class you know, families, is just insane. And we were receiving Medicaid, um, but when we moved, we stopped receiving it, because if you make a dollar over, you stop receiving it. And finally, we found this great Christian program called Financial Peace University, Dave Ramsey. And Dave saved our lives. We, I actually got to sing for Dave Ramsey at his, because he has a Christian fellowship every week. He ministers to his people. And he actually helped us get completely out of debt. Not only that, but he helped us to learn how to use our money and how instead of falling to having to buy everything now, just waiting for it, if you can, and saving. Um, and it took us three long years, but we got out of debt. And we 
We, we gave up our apartment. We put our stuff in storage. We lived on a bus. We lived like no one else, so later we can live like no one else. Well, not rich right now. We're actually just getting by, but to get rid of that debt is the most amazing family. If you're in that place of poverty, I want to tell you there's hope. There is so much hope. I can't believe it. It feels like yesterday when I was crying on the phone, and now all that debt is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 But there's a greater debt. But there's a greater debt that the Lord removed in my life. Mm. And that debt is the worst debt in the world. And that feeling of hopelessness that I had as a Jewish person not knowing the Lord, that is the worst debt. That are the, those were the worst tears of my life. Yeah. Of being abused, of being molested of going to Israel to find God and instead being date raped. And that is the spiritually bankrupt poverty that we need to worry about. We don't need to worry about the debt, the financial debt. God will take care of you. And that's what God told me to say to you this, this evening. God told me to tell you not to worry about that debt. He's going to help you. But worry about the debt of the people out there. Because that kind of spiritual bankruptcy is the worst debt in the world. And those people will die if they don't have Jesus tonight. And you have the answer. And God showed me the answer when he saved my soul. I gave my heart to him. I got so on fire for him. I came home and I told my parents, I want to get baptized. I want to live my life for the Lord. My Jewish father almost had a heart attack. He disowned me for a year. Now he's my best friend in the whole world. I love him to death. He's amazing. So God bless my father. and He's a restorer. He restored my life. He gave me a good husband. He taught me to love myself. He taught me that I'm valued. He made me whole again. Who else can do that? Who else? Amen. And so I pray for the people out there, and I pray that we can be vessels that God can use. And I want to thank God that he removed all that debt from my life. Most importantly, the spiritual debt that he Amen. Paid. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.